Welcome to Ethiopia Today. This is our major news of the week. Like and share the video and support the channel so that we reach out to more audience as much we can. And also don't forget to subscribe and turn on notification bell to Ethiopia Today channel if this is your first time. Then you won't miss out the exciting and very important videos we bring to you. Here are the topics covered in the video. Ethiopia sustains unity through perseverance as ever says PM. Power purchase agreement signed between Ethiopia and Kenya. Foreign Minister Lavrov emphasizes need for diverse relations with Ethiopia. Al-Shabaab fighters destroyed in Ethiopian incursion. Al-Monitor report says that the GERD dispute still stalled following US, GCC plus 3 summit in Jidda. Let's get into the details of our major weekly presentation. Ethiopia sustains unity through perseverance as ever says Prime Minister Abiy. Despite the unbearable challenges Ethiopia faced from within and outside, it has maintained its unity through perseverance as ever according to Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. In a statement he posted in his official social media platforms, the Premier said that Ethiopia will pursue the path of development it has chosen without losing its direction. He noted that wheat production has been intensified in the dry season to fulfill not only the needs of the country but also to export. It is indeed on the verge of accomplishing the objective. Despite the erroneous belief of some that the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam GERD would stop, it has already started generating power, Premier continued. As to him, the country which has been associated with famine and poverty has continued striving to become an earthly heaven by planting billions of tree seedlings and accomplishing park developments. He underscored that Ethiopia is pressing ahead without losing its focus. The sufferings have not stopped us, the Premier stated, noting that what we have gained exceeds what we have lost. Forces that strive to thwart the reform, those who have strong interest in the Abai or Nile River and the Horn of Africa in particular, have been directly and indirectly unleashing their destructive influence on the country, he underlined. Major Western media outlets and institutions have also waged campaigns against our country by counting on the power of their governments, Abiy noted. They also did everything in their capacity to destroy our economy and even tried to create wage between us and our friends to twist our arms and control us indirectly. In the last two years, many countries have failed to withstand international pressure and collapsed, the Premier noted, adding Ethiopia has however miraculously withstood the challenges, noting the shining victories the Ethiopian athletes have made at the 2022 World Athletics Championships in Oregon, United States of America, the Prime Minister said Ethiopians have crowned and triumphed at the global sports stage resisting all the internal and external challenges. Praising Ethiopian athletes for raising the national flag at the global stage, Abiy said we have plenty of reasons to be grateful as a nation. It is to be recalled that the Ethiopian athletics team achieved historic results that attracted the eyes of the world at the 2022 World Athletics Championships. Ethiopia had the most gold medals from among African countries and ranked second in the world by winning four gold, four silver and two bronze at the championships. In his recent interview with Ina, the world-renowned athlete Haile Geber Selassie described the victory at the 18th edition of the World Athletics Championship as a manifestation of a resilient nation and unity. Power Purchase Agreement Signed Between Ethiopia and Kenya the Ethiopian Electric Power and Kenya Power and Lighting Company PLC have signed a power purchase agreement for the sale and purchase of 200 megawatts of energy in the first phase of the power export with expected increase of power export to 400 megawatts in due course. CEOs of the companies signed the power purchase agreement PPA, in the presence of the Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta and Cabinet Secretary in the Ministry of Energy Monica Juma, and Ethiopia's Finance State Minister Eob Tekeline. 
After trail transmission of power in few weeks, full capacity power export is agreed to start in November 2022. According to the Ministry of Finance, the Kenya-Ethiopia Electricity Highway Project, Eastern Electricity Highway Project, is yet another new export market for Ethiopian electric power, expanding its market base in the continent by generating significant amount of revenue to the company. The interconnection with Ethiopia will ensure access to reliable and affordable energy to around 870,000 to 1.4 million Kenyan households, of which 18% will be located in rural areas. In a broader sense, the transmission line will in the long run benefit countries in North, East, and Southern Africa through interconnections from Southern Africa Power Pool and Eastern African Power Pool all the way to Egypt and Sudan in the North, the press release added. The overall investment in the project was 1.26 billion US dollars, the World Bank providing a loan of 684 million, while the African Development Bank and French Development Agency providing 338 million US dollars and 118 million US dollars, respectively. The governments of Ethiopia and Kenya are funding 32 million and 88 million US dollars, respectively, Ina reported. Ministry of Finance stated that the successful completion of the project is a testament of the strong bilateral relationship between the two countries as well as an example on how regional economic cooperation materialized to the benefit of the continent. The Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov emphasizes need for diverse relations with Ethiopia. The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov arrived in Addis Ababa Tuesday for the two-day visit. Lavrov stressed on Wednesday the need to further diversify the bilateral relations between the two nations, particularly in trade. Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Damaka Mikonin and his Russian counterpart discussed matters of mutual interest and briefed the press. Briefing journalists, Lavrov said his discussion with Foreign Minister Damaka focused on broad areas, including transport, economic, trade and investment as well as the current dynamics. The Foreign Minister added that the relations between Ethiopia and Russia have always been long-standing, those of friendship, solidarity and mutual sympathy. He further pointed out that necessary preparations are underway to make the Intergovernmental Commission efficient and effective on economy and commerce. It is expected to be held in Addis Ababa. The ministers have also discussed the promising avenue for the development of interactions between businesses in energy, transportation, telecommunication, information security, agriculture according to the report of Ina. We have also been informed about the internal political situation. We have confirmed our support to the effort being undertaken by our friends in order to ensure stability in the country and find positive solutions to the existing internal crisis, the Russian foreign minister stated. According to him, Ethiopia and Russia have similar positions on international and regional agenda items. And these approaches depend on by our respect for international law and primarily for the principles and norms of the UN Charter, and for the respect of sovereign rights of states. Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister, Damaka Makonin told journalist on his part that he had fruitful discussion with his Russian counterpart and they have agreed to continue working together on issues of mutual interest. He added that their discussion covered regional and global issues. We are grateful to Russia's unwavering support in helping us in safeguarding Ethiopia's sovereignty. More recently, the Russian Federation stood with us during the last two years opposing the undue pressure put on Ethiopia in the agenda of the UNSC. Foreign Minister Damaka and his counterpart agreed to further strengthen bilateral ties and identify actions to be taken by the Intergovernmental Commission on Economic, Scientific, Cultural and Trade Cooperation Areas. He also briefed Lavrov about Ethiopia's commitment in the trilateral negotiations among Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt on the filling and operation of GERD. Damaka finally applauded Lavrov's dedication to take Ethiopia, Russia and Africa, Russia relations to higher levels. It was also learned that Russia cancelled Ethiopia's debt of about $160 million. Al 
Al-Shabaab fighters destroyed an Ethiopian incursion. The Ethiopian region of Somali said this week they had destroyed fighters from the Al-Shabaab Islamist group, in a rare militant incursion from neighboring Somalia. The armed Al-Shabaab group that crossed into the southeastern region on Tuesday was surrounded in a sub-locality called Hulhu and completely destroyed. A three-day operation left more than 100 members of the militant group dead and destroyed 13 vehicles. The armed group was seeking to pass through El Kere district in the Somali region, more than 100 kilometers, 62 miles, from the Somalia-Ethiopian border. On Thursday, officials and residents of Baikul region, on the border with neighboring Somalia, reported Al-Shabaab attacks the previous day against bases hosting a special Ethiopian police unit which helps protect the frontier. Mohamed Malim, a local official in Somalia's Hadda district, told AFP on Thursday that this was the heaviest fighting ever around the towns of Otto and Yid in the country's west. It continued about six hours before the militants had been repelled. An Islamist group linked to Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab has led an insurrection against Somalia's federal government for 15 years. An African Union force with soldiers from five countries including Ethiopia and Kenya has supported the government in its fight against the insurgents. The movement has been ousted from Somalia's main urban areas, including the capital Mogadishu in 2011, but remains entrenched in vast swathes of the countryside. Attacks beyond Somalia's borders are rare and have mostly targeted Kenya, notably a bloody assault on Nairobi's Westgate shopping center in 2013 which left 67 people dead. An attack on Garissa University in 2015 killed 148 people and another incident at a Nairobi hotel complex in 2019 left 21 dead. We learned that the Ethiopian forces reportedly killed three key Al-Shabaab leaders in the latest operation in the southeastern part of the country bordering Somalia region. A joint Ethiopian Defense Force and Somali Region Special Forces operation in Arto area, where Al-Shabaab opened attack on Friday, after its fighters were wiped out in two villages earlier in the week, eliminated Fuad Mohammed, also known as Sankol, who is said to be chief of coordination of Al-Shabaab, Abdul Aziz Abu Musa, Al-Shabaab spokesman, and Ubadana Is who is said to be head of Al-Shabaab forces along the Ethiopian border. BBC Amharic on Friday said a Somali region government official anonymously said that Al-Shabaab forces on Friday morning opened fire in Arto and there was an exchange of fire. Fuad Mohammed has a bounty on his head for the United States has announced a $5 million reward for information leading to his capture or his death. Fuad is said to have Swedish citizenship. Major General Tesfe Ayolu, head of deployment in the Ethiopian Defense Force and coordinator of Security Command Post, has confirmed to Ethiopian news agency that the three Al-Shabaab leaders are killed near the Ethiopian border. Apart from the killings of the leaders, the terrorist group lost hundreds of its forces as the Ethiopian Defense Force and Somali Region Special Forces responded to its attack in two Somalia towns bordering Ethiopia, Arto and Yud. Vehicles that the group used were destroyed, and firearms sized, according to EBC. GERD dispute still stalled following U.S. GCC plus 3 summit in Jeddah. Although the leaders of Arab and Gulf countries, as well as the United States, expressed support for a diplomatic solution to the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, many don't believe this statement will revive the negotiations or push Ethiopia to end its unilateral measures, says Al Monitor report. The summit in Jeddah on July 16 between the leaders of the Arab Gulf states, Egypt, Jordan, Iraq and the United States touched on several major issues in the region, including the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, Al Monitor continued. The summit ended with a joint call for a diplomatic solution, while stressing the support for Egypt's water security, the report added. During U.S. Arab talks before U.S. President Joe Biden's visit to the Middle East, Cairo worked to mobilize pressure on Ethiopia to accept a binding agreement regulating the GERD. During his meeting with Biden in Jeddah on July 16, 
Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi stressed the need to reach a binding legal agreement for the process of filling and operating the dam, in a way that preserves Egyptian water security and achieves common interests, Al-Monitor report explains. Arab countries had offered several mediation initiatives in the past between Egypt and Sudan on the one hand, and Ethiopia on the other, most recently an Emirati initiative behind closed doors. Egypt did not reveal any information about the talks, while Sudan said talks had been held without mentioning any further details. None of these efforts, however, ended with a positive outcome, the report continued. Samar al baghari head of the Nile Basin Studies Center at the Cairo University, told Al Monitor, in general, it is not possible to rely on the Jidda statement, because previous interventions by the Arab League did not yield any results. She argued that the U.S. position is also not clear, as their statements remain diplomatic without giving priority to one party over the other, or clarifying the possibility of intervention. Wait a minute. What does Samar al baghari want from the U.S.? Does she want America to force Ethiopia to give away its sovereign rights? Does Samar al baghari want the United States to tie Ethiopia's hand behind in the same way as in colonial era, where Egypt enjoyed monopoly power on the Nile River? Egypt fully exercised unilateral actions on the river that its 85% originates from Ethiopia. All Nile Basin countries including Ethiopia had no say on the matters of the river. The Blue Nile River had been the cost and an burden to its source nation for centuries. Egypt has been the only beneficiary, that is why the Nile River has always been associated with Egypt, and even it has been known as Egypt's river and yet Ethiopia is the contributor of over 85% of its share. So, Egypt's burning question is the loss of its veto power in the Nile River. The U.S. has always been in favor of Egypt, started its support by blocking the soft loans to fund GERD that Ethiopia requested from the international financial institutions like World Bank and IMF. The American authorities have also tacitly attempted to move AU headquarters from Ethiopia's Addis Ababa to Egypt's Cairo. The U.S. administration has already lost credibility by Ethiopians, as it is only playing its own geopolitical games. On July 24, U.S. Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa Mike Hammer began a visit to the region, with stops in Egypt, the UAE and Ethiopia. In a statement July 23, the U.S. Embassy in Cairo said that Hammer will provide U.S. support toward forging a diplomatic resolution to issues related to the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam GERD, that would achieve the interests of all parties the AL Monitor continued. Observers believe that the U.S. Arab statement will not yield any quick solutions to the crisis. There are concerns that the dispute over the GERD could drag for years given the strict Ethiopian policies regarding its sovereign rights in the dam project. Meanwhile, Mona Omar, former assistant foreign minister for African affairs, argued on Al Monitor that it is diplomatically necessary for Egypt to have international support for its water interests in the Nile waters but these positions must turn into economic and political pressure to break the Ethiopian intransigence by threatening to impose sanctions or an economic embargo, in a bid to get Addis Ababa back to the negotiating table. She added that the recent joint statement does not offer radical solutions, neither does it represent real pressure on Ethiopia. These stances remain positive but ineffective in terms of resolving the dispute, she added. This brings to the end of our weekly presentation. Thanks for staying with us. Please also like, share, post your comments, and subscribe to our channel. These are the ways you can support Ethiopia today to continue producing these and similar contents. May God bless Ethiopia and its people. Thanks again.